Today, we're gonna to talk all about what I consider to be one of the most interesting nutrients, essential fatty acids, and specifically fish oils. More importantly, I'll tell you what they actually do in your body, and then you can decide whether they're a worthwhile investment. As always, I wanna point out that I'm not recommending any particular fish oil supplements. What I am going to do is talk about how fish oils work and what to look out for in a good supplement. Let's get started. Firstly, what makes fish oil so special? Well, let's get back to basics and talk about fats. Fats are a macronutrient that are made up of three fatty acids combined with a molecule of glycerol. The fatty acids can be divided into three main categories based on the types of bonds they have. Saturated fat, which can be found in foods like butter, meat, coconut oil, is made up of fatty acids that have no double bonds. This is why they're called saturated, because they're saturated or full of carbon atoms. Because of this, saturated fatty acids are straight and can pack together nice and tightly. This is why saturated fats are often solid at room temperature. Unsaturated fatty acids have at least one double bond, and this bond causes the fatty acid chain to have a slight bend or kink in the middle, which means mostly unsaturated fats don't pack together as tightly and are liquid at room temperature. If there's only one double bond, it's called a monounsaturated fatty acid. And a really good example is oleic acid in olive oil. If it has more than one double bond, it's called a polyunsaturated fatty acid. And that has even more kinks in the chain. To make things a little more complex, we can further classify polyunsaturated fatty acids by where the first double bond appears in the chain. If the first double bond appears at the sixth carbon atom from the end of the chain, it's called an omega-6 fatty acid. They're commonly found in plant fats such as sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, and other vegetable oils, as well as in most seeds. On the other hand, if the first double bond occurs at the third carbon atom from the end, it's called an omega-3 fatty acid. So there is a genuine reason that those terms exist. Now you know something completely useless for day-to-day -day conversation. Omega-3 fatty acids are found in flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, and oily fish, but they're not all the same. You see, animals aren't able to make some unsaturated fatty acids, which means we need to get them from our diet, and that's why we have the term essential fatty acid. There are two essential fatty acids, linoleic acid, the omega-6 essential fatty acid, and alpha-linolenic acid, ALA, which is the omega-3 essential fatty acid. But wait, there's more. ALA needs to be converted to a more active form in the body, so it needs to be made longer and to be more unsaturated. These are called long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. And yes, I know, it is an incredibly catchy name. One of the longer fatty acids produced is called acosapentaenoic acid, which thankfully we can just call EPA. EPA then also gets converted to docosahexaenoic acid or DHA. It's EPA and DHA that seem to have some very significant health benefits. And where do you get that from? Here's a hint. The answer is in the title of this video. That's right. Oily fish is a great source of EPA and DHA. I said oily fish specifically because white fish like cod is so low in fat that it can't be considered a source of omega-3. By oily fish, I mean things like salmon, trout, sardines, tuna, or the best of them all, mackerel, which is 3.2 grams of omega-3 per 100 grams. Here's another interesting fact. While fish farming gets a lot of hate, Farm salmon actually has more omega-3 than wild salmon because of the consistent feed that it receives that is already high in omega-3s. The big problem with this is that you'd have to eat fish and there are a lot of people that simply don't like it. I don't know about you, but there is no way that I'm going to try and get all of my omega-3 from mackerel. It is quite possibly the fishiest of fish. That's where fish oil supplements come in. You could instead get the EPA and DHA you need from one to three grams a day of fish oil, a maximum of 27 calories. And if you're a vegetarian or vegan, fear not, you can also get EPA and DHA from algal oil supplements. In fact, the reason oily fish is so high in EPA and DHA is because algae is the base of the ocean food chain and these fatty acids build up in the flesh of fish. So that was a little more than the basics, but think of all the great dinner conversations you can now have. Omega-3s play a huge role in a lot of our body's processes, from immunity and inflammation to brain development and heart health. They are called essential fatty acids for a reason. We need them to live and to be healthy. And here's a very, very brief overview of some of the health effects of EPA and DHA. Firstly, DHA is essential for proper brain development and function, even from before we're even born. Population studies that look at what people eat regularly have shown that people with diets higher in DHA have a lower risk of declining brain function as they age. However, that doesn't prove anything about supplements. For that, we need to look at intervention studies. 
These are experiments where we give a specific group of people a specific supplement in order to see if it has a specific effect. Interestingly, one intervention study found that high doses of DHA specifically, around two grams per day, reduce the brain shrinkage seen in older people with mild cognitive decline. There's even some evidence to suggest that fish oil supplements in general might be able to help improve memory function in older people too. However, none of this research is definitive, so we need a lot more evidence before we can say if fish oil supplements have a definitive effect on brain health. Another benefit of EPA and DHA is looking after our muscle as we get older. My specific area of research is sarcopenia, which is basically the loss of muscle as we age. Fish oil is one of the supplements that shows a lot of promise for helping older people to maintain muscle size and strength. For example, one intervention study in a group of 60 to 85 year olds found that a little over three grams a day of combined EPA and DHA helped to increase thigh muscle size, grip strength, and one rep max strength for a number of exercises, including leg press and chest press. So it might just be able to help your granny stay jacked. One of the most well-known effects of fish oil is on triglycerides. When you get a blood lipid panel at the doctors, triglycerides are one of the main blood lipids tested, along with total and HDL cholesterol. Excessively high triglycerides can lead to a greater risk of heart disease. Luckily, triglycerides are very responsive to lifestyle changes. So maintaining a healthy body weight, exercising, and following a healthy diet can help reduce triglycerides. Eating fish is also known to help reduce triglycerides. And if you don't want to eat fish, supplements like fish oil or algal oil might be the next best thing. When looking for a good fish oil supplement, read the label and check how much EPA and DHA you get per capsule, because this varies a lot between supplements. A good dose to aim for is 1000 to 2000 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA per day. Depending on the brand you get, that could be a lot of capsules. So bear that in mind. So what do you think? Did that clear everything up for you about fish oils? As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.